Blessed Assurance by Kane is in 6.8 and at 59 BPM. This is the well-known hymn, Blessed Assurance, and in this version of the song, we really have some kind of groove templates that we're playing. There are three main groove ideas that we use, and then really from there, we're playing the song and playing to the song. And what I mean by that is we're not necessarily you know, adding a specific bass drum at each section um, or really following like, you know, verse has this groove, chorus has this groove. There is some of that, but we're really kind of moving and flowing with the lyrics and the feel of the song and really with the dynamics as well. And so I'd say if that's not something you're used to, if you're more used to kind of playing the parts through, just spend a little bit of time and I've broken this down into three grooves. You can play it that way, where you have a groove for the verse, groove for the chorus. And when at one point we even go into a full shuffle, okay? Like that halftime shuffle feel. And so I've broken those grooves down there for you. But I would say make sure to get comfortable with the patterns. And then the main thing to focus on after we've got those grooves down is really the dynamics and then moving and flowing with the song, like I'm saying. And in practical terms, that means just making sure we're down in the verse, up in the choruses, putting our fills and breaks in the right places. And any little embellishments or touches that we do want to add are also in context and feel like in a good place. They aren't getting in the way of the lyrics or anything like that. All right. So with that, grab your sticks with me. Let's watch the music video and get to it. The main groove goes like this. So this first pattern is our foundational pattern that everything else will be built on. And what we have here is eighth notes on the hi-hat, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, we're in six, eight, so there's six of those eighth notes. We then have our kick on beat one and backbeat snare on beat four. Okay, so all together. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now the first uh, goal with this song is really gonna be to get that pattern down. Okay, and that's gonna be the foundation of everything else that's to come. However, I'll say that a lot of the kind of expression or even the emotion in this song, at least from the drums, okay, and even maybe some of the musicality comes from all those subtleties that we have and all those little ghost notes and shuffled notes that we have. And really what that is and the basis of that is a shuffle, okay, or 16th note triplets. And so while we're playing these eighth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, the whole time we have 16th note triplets kind of underneath, even if we're not playing them, we're thinking and feeling them. And that can be one of the first steps is to start hearing and counting even in your head, okay? One and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a one and a two and a three and a four triplet, five triplet, six triplet, one. However you count them. Again, it's a little bit hard to actually enunciate at that speed, but we want to be hearing them and thinking about them up here, okay? Tick, 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 even if we aren't playing them yet. Then from there, I would say the first thing to do with this groove and when we're using it at the front of the song in the verse and the first and the first chorus, yeah, is to basically just every now and again input a shuffle. And basically what a shuffle is, is you're leaving out the middle 16th note triplet, okay? So one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a one. You're leaving out that and or one, let two, let three. You're leaving out the trip, okay, if you count triplets that way. And so you can do that on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, five, a six, a one, okay? Use that shuffle. You can do it on the bass drum. One, two, three, a four, five, six, a one. You can use it with ghost notes. One, two, three, four, five, a six, a one. And so start to experiment with throwing in a shuffled note every now and again, either with the ghost notes, um, a kick, or a hi-hat shuffle variation. All right? So hope that's very practical in how to get this pattern first and then add some of those embellishments. And now let me play the pattern for you slowly.
Practice that along with the loops and let's go to our next section. The full shuffle groove goes like this. All right, so building on our initial pattern, like I said before, a lot of these embellishments are coming from a shuffle, okay, and from hearing and feeling that shuffle. Then when we go to the second verse after coming down from the first chorus, and remember those breaks we have as well, okay, just remember those breaks we have in the verse um, and coming out of the chorus, then we land on this full shuffle pattern, okay. And so again, a shuffle is basically playing the first and last note of a triplet, okay? So one trip, let two trip, let three trip, let four, okay? We're leaving out the middle notes, at least on the hi-hat, okay? Because we're actually gonna play it in the ghost notes. But if we leave out those ghost notes for now and look at our pattern, it's very similar to the first pattern that we have. We have kick on one, snare on four, and then hi-hat is playing all the eighth notes, we're just now shuffling them, okay? So one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a one. And I'll say that's the first place to start, okay? It's really getting that nice and solid. And again, we don't want a hi-hat too loud. We can use a little bit of wrist strokes to get that, you know, tip of the stick shoulder if that helps with that motion. But at first, if we need to do more wrist strokes on the edge, that's fine too, okay? Both can work. We do want a little bit, I would say, an accent on the down beat. So, da, 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 da. There is a louder stroke on the beat, okay? Then from there, we're going to add in the middle triplet with the ghost note, okay? So that would be, again, slowly, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one, okay? A one trip, let two trip, let three trip, let four trip, let one. And these are ghost notes, okay? Not full accents. So the next step would be to add those in without playing a backbeat. So one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one, okay? Or five and a six and a, right? Because we're in six eight. Then we have our backbeat on four. So then again, without the kick, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. Okay, and that will take a little bit of getting used to it from playing a ghost note on the middle triplet to playing the backbeat on beat four. I'd say initially leave out the next ghost note because technically if we're playing them all, it would be backbeat ghost, right? Which involves a like accent and tap. We're just gonna play backbeat and, and then just a shuffle, okay? So one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, five and uh, six and uh, one, okay? Like a long bar when you play it that slowly, right? Then from there, add in the kick, okay? One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, five and uh, six and uh, one. Okay, and once that is comfortable, then slowly take it up to speed. Okay. All right. Hope that explained it uh, clearly for you without being too long and involved, but now let me play it for you slowly so you can really see what's happening. Practice that along with the loops and let's check out our final section. The pattern in the chorus goes like this. So in our chorus pattern here, the main thing is that we've moved our lead hand from the hi-hat to the ride. Or well, the first chorus, we actually do play this uh, same pattern on the hi-hat, okay? Just slightly louder. But what we have is eighth notes on the ride, backbeat snare on four, and then our kick is changing slightly. So let's look at some of these patterns that are happening, okay? So the kind of initial one that we'll play is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four four, five, six, okay? I mean, you'll hear how that moves with the chords and with the lyrics that the, the bass and guitar and keys are playing as well, okay? 
Then we'll also have some variations where we use that shuffled kick just before the snare. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, like I said in the introduction, this is not necessarily a two bar pattern. It's the same every time. So I would listen to the original recording and watch the music video a few times on this just to get a feel for where it is. And then when you're practicing, just keep that in mind. This is not necessarily a set pattern, okay? But those are the variations you can use on your kick drum that will fit really well in this chorus. Then the last thing with this is just that you can use some ghost notes as well, okay? And kind of be maybe open up and be a little more free in the chorus than you would in the verse, which we're really trying to keep um, those grooves happening really smoothly, okay? Here we can open up a little bit on the ride. So with some ghost notes, you might play one, two, three, a four, five, a six, a one, two, three, four, five, a six, and a one. Right? You could use a, a double with your ghost notes there because you're in triplets. One and a two and a three, right? You can use uh, double strokes as well. And so then to put that all together, one, two, a three, a four, five, a six, a one, two, a three, a four, five, a six, a one. You can use those ghost notes and kick to kind of interplay there in the chorus. Of course, once we've got that main foundational 6-8 pattern down, okay? Great. Again, I hope that's helpful for you. Try to explain these in a way that's not too clunky, but still gives you the details. With that now, let me play it for you slowly. Practice that along with the loops, and I really hope that you enjoy playing this song. If you're tired of searching the whole internet to look for a decent tutorial, check out worshipartistry.com. We've got over 600 licensed, cohesive song lessons for your whole team. Link is in the description.